afternoon guys, Dave Canberra at the Pathfinder School, um, back with another Journal of the Yurt. Um, I wanted to have a discussion with you guys today um, about kit mentality, um, kit reduction, and basically the mentality of development of your kit over time. And I think it's important that we have this conversation. Um, I got a prompt from a buddy of mine, Marty Munson, today on YouTube that kind of prompted this video and I think it was good for him to remind me that not everyone may understand my intention on some of these things and so what I wanted to explain to you was I think that everyone develops their kit over time and it's the same thing with me you know I might think one thing is good three years ago and over the course of three or four years you may find something that's better that's what kit development is about and sometimes you don't always think something's better maybe it's just more versatile or maybe it's as versatile and you test and you change things in and out until you find exactly what you want and everyone does that that's what your kit development strategy should be all about the other thing that you have to understand is that you know I promote common man stuff okay and I also promote common man common sense as Marty would say and what I mean by that is, you know, because something costs a small amount of money doesn't necessarily mean it's common man and common sense. Common man, obviously, is anything that's affordable, but common sense says that even if you pay a little more money for something that's bulletproof in the long run, and you're not going to have to replace it with that cheaper item over and over and over and over again, then you're going to save money in the long run, and that's common sense common man. And I think that question came up a little bit yesterday um, on the new Pathfinder trade knife because I said it was a common man knife at a hundred dollar price where you could go out and buy you know an old hickory butcher knife which will do you for a starter knife for ten bucks. Um, you can go out and buy a Mora for less than twenty bucks and it will do you but it's not going to do you over the long term. So what I wanted to come up with was a you know a knife that was handmade in the U.S guaranteed for life at a price range that someone could afford and that's the important aspects of that is handmade guaranteed for life made in the u.s you're not going to find that you know very cheap and i've strove for a long time to find something like that that i could offer at a more common man price or lower price if that's what you want to call it um, and I found this knife, you know, that I can sell for $100. And we'll review that knife a little bit in this video. But a couple of items I wanted to talk about real quick just to give you examples. Um, when people start going out and camping and, and doing things like that, paracord is the standard. Every survival manual out there says paracord, paracord, paracord. Um, what you have to understand is it's not the only alternative. And I was introduced to Bankline by a buddy of mine, Steve Davis, a long time ago. And I have found it to be more versatile than paracord. So while I may have professed that paracord was great at one time, and it does still have its purposes to this day, I carry paracord all over my pack because it does have its purposes. But for overall usability, for trapping, for sewing up gear, for fishing, things of that nature, bank line is far superior to paracord. So I profess to my students now carry bank line and that's why it's a kit development thing you know over the years you're going to change your mind about what you carry and about what you think is better than something else that you might have thought was great at one time maybe looking back on it it was great but this is better and I think that's what's important is that everyone develops their own mentality and their own kit reduction strategies over time just because I say something is good or I think this is great or that's great doesn't mean it's the best thing for you um, I don't expect you to you know we went over this a little bit with mentors in another video. I don't expect people to take what I say at face value. I expect you to test it. If I tell you that bank line I believe is better than paracord, buy both and go out and test them and see. And you can make your own judgments. So what I've tried to do with this new knife is I've tried to do the same thing. I've tried to come up with something that was going to be American made. It was going to be handmade. It was going to be, you know, good steel. A good knife design, a good blade design that I thought was conducive to bushcraft and to hunting and camping and things like that. And so that's why we came up with, you know, the Habilis Trade Knife. And I'm going to give you a close-up view of this real quick. Um, this is a 1095 high carbon steel knife. It's a little over an eighth of an inch thick. The blade is five inches long. It has a classic short drop point here with a roach belly type design. It has a finger toil at the bottom that's flattened out. It has micarta handles. This one has orange and black micarta handles. The production models will be brown and black uh, micarta handles. It has a divot drilled into the handle here 
to use as a handhold for making a bow drill fire if you need to use it for that. It also has holes drilled in it here and here where there's rivets through there so that you can lash this onto something as a spear point if you need to do that. So it's a very conducive knife to a lot of chores. It's not too thick that it's a big chopper. It's thick enough that you can baton it easy enough. But this is not meant for a one tool option. This is meant for a knife that you can use for a hunting tool, a butchering tool, a carving tool, and things of that nature. The Pathfinder knife, which I still believe to this day is the best one tool option out there, um, that I designed a few years ago is a one tool option. I would not carry this new uh, Pathfinder trade knife by Habilis as a one tool option if I had nothing else. I would carry the Pathfinder knife or I'd carry the Pathfinder Scout. But if I've got an axe, if I've got a saw, then I can afford to use a smaller knife that's a little bit more conducive to fine tasks. That's why we created it. We created it to fill a gap in both common man, common sense mentality, as well as a non-one-tool option for a good knife. Um, right now, what we're talking about doing with this knife is selling it with a very simple leather sheath that's fairly cheap. It'll be a leather belt sheath. It will not be a bushcraft style sheath. We're going to try to price it at $95. Um, and then we're going to work on a Kydex sheath for it in the future, as well as maybe a bushcraft style leather sheath, which will add a few dollars to the cost. But right now, I want to keep it in that less than $100 range with a decent sheath that you can wear on your belt and rely on that knife all the time. So, Really, the main reason for this video wasn't to review this knife, although I'm, I did show you a close-up of it. It's not available yet on our website. This is a prototype. We won't have production models of this knife for probably at least three weeks to a month. But I wanted you to understand my mentality when I say, hey, look at this great knife. I'm not saying, hey, this is the greatest knife ever made, and it's the only one I'd ever carry. I carry five or six different knives because I test out theories all the time. And that's what... Gaining wisdom and survivability is all about is testing theories. But all of those things are learned over time. All of those things take dirt time. But all of those things take what I call experimental archaeology. Look at what worked for someone else or look at what worked in a past time period. Apply those methods and see if it works for you. If it doesn't work for you, try to improve on it to make it better. That's what it's all about. There is no one person that knows all, sees all, and tells all of survival. We are all students of the wilderness. I learn every single day from all the people on YouTube, from my subscribers on Facebook, from people who just send me messages, to the guy who sent me a message on Facebook or on YouTube last night, Marty Munson, who said, you should have this conversation because there's a lot of people that don't understand. So I want you to understand that kit mentality is development over time. You're going to test things. You're going to change things. You're going to test things. You're going to change things. And what you think is great today might not be great tomorrow. It might still be usable, but it might not be the best thing for that situation. And situational environmental changes and being able to adapt and improvise to environmental changes is what evolution and survivability are all about is being able to adapt to environmental changes and if you can do that you can affect your survivability but i appreciate everything that you guys do for me for my family for my school i appreciate your views and your support and i'll be back as soon as i can with another video thank you guys